The Raspberry Pi Foundation is it's an organisation uh, founded by several of us from the university here in Cambridge uh, and a group of local businessmen to try and um, uh, put some of the fun back into programming, to try to get children involved in programming in the same way they were in the 1980s. Okay, so we're going to put it together and boot it. Um, first of all, display connector. There's in the back there. Um, then we want to have mouse and keyboard into the USB. Now we need to put a uh, add the SD card. This is this stores the operating system image and all the programs for the device. It's just a regular SD card. And finally, power. And this is just a mobile phone charger. And that just goes into the end there. And you can see red light comes on. You can see that the machine is starting to boot. Things appear on the display. I grew up in the 1980s. Many of my friends, even people who didn't go on into engineering careers, could at least write that two-line program, you know, 10 print, I am great, 20 go to 10. I guess what happened towards the end of the 1980s and the beginning of the 1990s was that that games market was taken over by the games consoles, um, which obviously, by their nature, are not programmable hardware. But what that led to was a massive reduction in the number of children who got involved in simple programming. A lot of um, uh, computer companies named after fruit, so that's, and not many fruits are left, so that's where Raspberry came from. Pi is from, there's a programming language called Python, and originally we intended to make a machine which could only be used to program in Python. How many of you know the game Snake? You play Snake and you'll knock your phone? Right, what we're going to do today, we're going to show you an implementation of Snake written in Python. The Raspberry Pi is, a, is designed to be cheap enough that a child can uh, buy it themselves. It's designed to plug into common peripherals, so it will plug into your television. Now the command prompt is how computers used to be. Although we're primarily focused on the education market, we expect that a lot of people are going to find uh, interesting industrial and commercial applications of this platform. We expect to see a lot of innovation enabled by the fact that we've reduced the cost of computing. What we're going to do is we're going to just go plug. One of the nice realizations for us is when we take it into schools and we put it in front of children, uh, they actually like the fact it's not in a box. They like the fact that, that they can see what it does. One of the advantages children today have with some of these programming languages like, like Scratch is that a lot of that um, uh, framework is already provided for them, so they can concentrate on the interesting stuff. What? We've always felt there's a five to ten minute period at the start of any child's engagement with programming where it all seems baffling and complicated. Uh, and once they've made their first couple of modifications to a program and got a good result, that's what gets you, that's what gets you hooked. That's what gets a significant number of people hooked. So yeah, when you, when you see that kind of level of enthusiasm from kids, it really encourages us to believe that we're doing a worthwhile thing.